In this lesson, we're going to cover the definite integral as an accumulation function. So first, we're going to review a couple of theorems. We have the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says suppose f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b. Number one, if g of x equals the integral from a to x of f of t dt, then when you take the derivative of this, you get g prime of x is equal to f of x. So the derivative of the integral is equal to the original function. Number two, we have the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to capital F of b minus capital F of a, where capital F is any antiderivative of lowercase f. Right here I have a note. It says if f is a positive function, then g of x can be interpreted as the area under the graph of f from a to x, where x is in the closed interval from a to b. Therefore, we can interpret g as an area function or an accumulation function. Next, we have the net change theorem. It says the definite integral of a rate of change, capital F prime, is the net change in the original function capital F. So if you have the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx, it's going to equal capital F of b minus capital F of a. And right here we have a note, another way to interpret the definite integral, the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx. It's an accumulation of the change in f over that closed interval from a to b. You can also rearrange the terms in the net change theorem where you have the final amount f of b equals the starting amount f of a plus the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx. This example says if we have the derivative of capital F of x and it's equal to f of x, we're also given that capital F of 1 is equal to negative 2, then we need to find the integral from 1 to x of lowercase f of t dt. So since we're given capital F prime of x is equal to lowercase f of x, instead of f of t right here, we're going to replace this with capital F prime of t. So now we're going to evaluate this definite integral. The integral of f prime is going to be just capital F of t. And then we evaluate it from 1 to x. Now we're going to plug in x minus plugging in 1. And then right here we have f of 1 is equal to negative 2. So we're going to plug that in right here. And we end up getting capital F of x plus 2. So the answer is C. This example says people are leaving a basketball game at a rate modeled by the function d of t equals 800 over t plus 1 quantity squared, where d is the number of people leaving per minute t minutes after the conclusion of the game. If 2,000 people were present at the conclusion of the game, how many people were still there nine minutes after the conclusion of the game? So what we want to point out is there's 2,000 people when the game concludes. And then we have this formula which describes the rate at which people are leaving per minute right after the game ends. So how we're going to set this up is we're going to write 2,000 and then we're going to subtract the integral from 0 to 9 because it's asking for how many people there are after 9 minutes. And we're taking the integral of this rate. So again, we have there were 2,000 people when the game ended. This is the rate at which people leave per minute. So when we integrate from 0 to 9, indicating 9 minutes after the game ended, of that rate, that's going to give us the total number of people who left from 0 to 9 minutes. And then we're going to plug this straight in the graphing calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to press y equals, and we're going to type d of t as our y1. So now we have d of t entered as y1. And now we're going to type 2,000 minus, and then next we'll press math 9, and we're going to go 0 to 9. And next we want to call up d of t, which is saved in y1. So we're going to go alpha trace and select y1 and then x and then enter. So we get 1,280. So we get 1,280 people that were still there nine minutes after the game ended. So our final answer is C. This example says let f be a continuous function such that f of negative 1 is negative 3 and f prime of x is equal to x squared plus 5x times cosine of 3x. What is the value of f of 3? round to the nearest thousandth. So we're going to use the net change theorem. You have your final amount equals your starting amount plus the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx. So we're trying to find the value of f of 3. So we write f of 3 equals and then we're given f of negative 1. So then we add the integral from negative 1 to 3 of f prime of x dx. We're given that f of negative 1 is negative 3 and then I just plugged in the function for f prime of x. So at this point, we're going to plug this into the graphing calculator. So I typed f prime of x into our y1, and then we're going to quit out of here. So we'll go negative 3 plus, and then we're going to do math 9, and then we go negative 1 to 3. And then we're taking the integral of f prime, which we put that as our y1, so we're going to call up that function. So we'll go alpha trace, and we'll select y1, and then press enter. So we get negative 0.716. All right, so here's our final answer. f of 3 is equal to negative 0.716, and that's rounded to the nearest thousandth. This example says let f be a function defined on the closed interval from negative 4 to 4, 
and it gives us that f of 0 is negative 3. The graph of f prime is given right here, and we have one line segment and we have a semicircle. Part A says on what intervals, if any, is f decreasing? Justify your answer. So remember for f to be decreasing, that means that f prime is negative. So you can see in this graph, because this is the graph of f prime, f prime is negative right here, and that would be the interval from 2 to 4. So I wrote that out, f is decreasing on the interval from 2 to 4, since f prime of x is less than 0 on the interval from 2 to 4. Part B says find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection on the graph of f in the open interval from negative 4 to 4. Justify your answer. So a point of inflection occurs where f changes from concave up to concave down or vice versa. Since we're given the graph of f prime, that would mean that a point of inflection would occur where f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So right here, f prime is decreasing, and then at negative 2, f prime changes to increasing. At 0, f prime changes to decreasing. So that means our point of inflections for f occur at negative 2 and 0. So I wrote that out, f prime changes from decreasing to increasing at x equals negative 2, and from increasing to decreasing at x equals 0. Therefore, the graph of f has points of inflection at x equals negative 2 and 0. Part C says find f of negative 4 and f of 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the initial condition that f of 0 equals negative 3. So we set this up as f of negative 4 equals f of 0 plus the integral from 0 to negative 4 of f prime of x dx. These are out of order, so I'm going to flip this around, and I'm going to plug in negative 3 for f of 0. To flip these, you bring out a negative, so we have negative 3 minus the integral from negative 4 to 0 of f prime of x dx. So now that we have this integral, it's going to be the area under the curve of f prime of x from negative 4 to 0. So we're going to find this area right here that's under the curve from negative 4 to 0. And the way I want to do this is we have this rectangle right here. Let me draw it real fast. So we're going to take the area of this rectangle, which is 4 by 2, so 4 times 2 is 8. And then we're going to subtract the semicircle. So when we take the rectangle and we subtract the semicircle, that will leave this shaded region down here. And that shaded region is the area under the curve of f prime from negative 4 to 0. So again, the area under the curve is the area of the rectangle, so 4 times 2 is 8, minus 1 half pi and then r squared. This makes 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2, and then we still have pi. We distribute the negative, and we end up getting negative 11 plus 2 pi. Next, we're going to find f of 3, and we're going to set up the same way. We're going to go f of 3 equals f of 0 and then plus the integral from 0 to 3 of f prime of x dx. f of 0, again, is negative 3, and then this represents the area under the curve of f prime from 0 to 3. So for the area under the curve from 0 to 3, we have this triangle right here. The base is 2 and the height is 2. It's above the x-axis, so its value will be positive. Then we have this triangle, which is below the x-axis. Its base is 1, height is 1, and we'll subtract this because it's below the x-axis. So I have that set up 1 half and then base height was 2 and 2. This was positive because this triangle was above the x-axis. And this triangle is below the x-axis, so we put a negative. And then the area is 1 half base height, where the base and the height are both 1. So this makes 2 and this is negative 1 half. Negative 3 plus 2 is going to be negative 1. So we have negative 1 and negative 1 half, which is negative 3 halves. So our final answer is negative 3 halves. This example says the cows on a small dairy farm in upstate New York are milked in the morning during a two-hour period. Milk from the cows is pumped into a storage tank, and the volume of milk in the tank at time t is modeled by a strictly increasing twice differentiable function m, where m of t is measured in gallons and t is measured in minutes. At time t equals zero, there are 300 gallons of milk in the storage tank. Values of m of t at selected times t are given in the table. So here we have our table, and time goes from zero to 120 minutes. So to find m prime of 70, we're going to look at our chart, and we have 50 and 90. So 70 falls exactly in between these two values. So we can estimate m prime of 70 using these two data points. So we end up getting 43 gallons per minute. So I wrote out the explanation of the meaning of m prime of 70. The volume of milk in the storage tank is increasing at a rate of 43 gallons per minute at the time t equals 70 minutes. Part B says use the data in the table to evaluate the integral from 0 to 120 of m prime of t dt. Using correct units, interpret the meaning of the integral in context of this problem. So when we take the integral of m prime of t, we're going to get just m of t, and then we evaluate it from 0 to 120. So we plug in 120 minus plugging in 0, and we'll get these values from the table. So m of 120 is 4,250, and m of 0 is 300. 
So for our final answer, we get 3,950. And the meaning of this integral is the volume of milk in the storage tank has increased by 3,950 gallons over the time interval from t equals 0 to t equals 120 minutes. Part C says use a right Riemann sum with four subintervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate 1 over 120 of the integral from 0 to 120 m of t dt. Explain the meaning of this expression in context to this problem. Does this approximation overestimate or underestimate the exact value of this integral? Explain your reasoning. So we have 1 over 120, the integral from 0 to 120 of m of t dt. I drop down the 120, and now we're going to evaluate this integral using a right Riemann sum with four subintervals. So I want to point out, according to our table, it goes 0 to 20, 20 to 50, 50 to 90, 90 to 120. When we do a right Riemann sum, we're going to use the values on the right. So I just want to point out this width is 20, this width is 30. So each width is different, so we're not going to factor out a common width to the front. So here I have it set up. Here's your width, and this is m of 20. Here's your width, this is m of 50, and then so on. And then I got these values from the table. So we have 780, 1640, 3360, and 4250. And finally, I'm going to plug this whole thing into a calculator. So you end up getting 2722.5. And the meaning of this expression in context with the problem is the average volume of milk in gallons in the storage tank over the time interval from 0 to 120 minutes. Finally, we need to note whether this approximation is an overestimate or an underestimate. Since it says that the function is strictly increasing, that means using a right Riemann sum will produce an overestimate. So I just wrote that out. This approximation is an overestimate because a right Riemann sum was used and m of t is a strictly increasing function. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching.